Hi, this video is very different than all the rest of the videos on our channel. This is a budget travel vlog, if you don't know. And I just want this video to be an open forum, respectful discussion. I don't know all the answers. I don't think there is a clear answer. I think the topic we're talking about today is very gray. There are good points and there are bad points. And all I want to do is just start a conversation about this. I'm not trying to point fingers, make anyone the bad guy. I just think it's worth talking about and I don't think that it often is. I think that as travel vloggers and people who consume travel vlogs, we can and should be thinking about deeper topics like this. I really hope that you can hear me out here and not just hate me from the title. This is not a place for hate and if you have actually clicked on this video because you expect me to badmouth a whole bunch of countries and a whole bunch of people, that's not going to happen. I don't want any racism in the comments. If you've come to this video thinking you're going to get that, you're not and you're not welcome here. Basically what we're talking about is the mixture of politics and tourism and travel vloggers and influencers and how they commingle, should they commingle, all that type of thing. And what has kind of sparked me thinking about this is the recent news that Saudi Arabia has now opened its doors for tourism for a long list of countries. You can now get a tourist visa and visit. Along with this, the Saudi government invited a whole bunch of Instagrammers and YouTubers, influencers basically, to the country. And they had all expense paid vacations there and they are now posting vlogs and, and Instagram photos from their time there as ads and exposure for uh, Saudi Arabia. There have been a lot of opinions about this from several sides and I guess to just get this whole ball rolling, I am going to be talking about the dangers of going somewhere like Saudi Arabia and some countries besides that in the Middle East and beyond. And I just want to make something abundantly clear right here and right now. When I am talking about the dangerous situations in countries. I'm talking about the government, I'm talking about the laws and the restrictive regimes. I'm not talking about normal people in the country. I have nothing against people in the country. People in these countries are like people in any country. They're normal, they want to live good lives, they're usually really nice. I've read a lot of stories and comments from Saudi people and I've seen even some YouTube videos of them and YouTube videos of people in Iran and other Middle Eastern countries and they seem so nice and so welcoming. And that part of these influencers' posts are so true. And I don't want to take anything away from that because, like I'm saying, I am not talking about the people of the country when I'm talking about the dangerous government and things you should look out for. So a lot of people are taking issue with these vloggers and Instagrammers going to somewhere like Saudi Arabia because of all the human rights issues. There is a male guardianship system in Saudi Arabia, so women need men's permission for almost everything. Of course, if you are a woman in public, you must always be covered. There is no freedom of press. Several Saudi bloggers are in jail and have had lashings because they have spoken out against the government or spoken for women's rights. Something you've probably heard of is Jamal Khashoggi, a journalist who is speaking out against the Saudi government. He was brutally killed even when he was not in Saudi. If you are gay, you can be killed. If you renounce Islam, you can be killed. And May this year in Saudi, there was a massacre of 37 people. A lot of the people who were killed were uh, charged for being at protests or speaking out against the government. Three of them were minors when they were convicted. One was 16. A lot, if not all, of these people were tortured until they were forced to give fake confessions. Two of the bodies were left out for hours as a warning. People talk about how women are now allowed to drive in the country, which shows change, but a bunch of the women who spearheaded that change, who were big advocates for women being able to drive, are in jail and definitely without access to a lawyer. These are just a few things that are going on. They're some of the biggest reasons that people are angry with these Instagrammers and, and YouTubers and influencers who are promoting Saudi when all these things are happening all the time. I guess the question is, should these influencers be getting paid to promote a country where human rights violations are so rampant? I don't know the answer to that. In my opinion, the issue doesn't really lie with whether or not 
vloggers go to any country, but it's how they portray the country, how transparent they are, how honest they are, and how mindful they are of things that are going on around them. The influencers who went to Saudi only have good things to say. And I can see the two coins here because I know that it seems obvious that people know so much about Saudi Arabia and they only see the bad side, that you'd want to show the good side. I actually find that a lot of people don't know all the things happening in Saudi Arabia because I had a conversation with people I worked with last year when I was working at home and I had no idea what was going on except for a girl who had actually visited the Middle East. I don't think everyone is aware of all of the bad things, although they might have a vague idea. But I understand the point of you want to show the good side of a country because that's not often shown. The good side does exist. It's there. Like I said earlier, and I've seen videos. The people there were so welcoming and kind and generous and funny and interesting. And they're real nice people trying to live good lives just like anywhere else, like I said earlier. And of course, there can be lots of beauty in the country. Like I've seen fo these photos from Saudi Arabia, they look amazing. Like they look so cool. And there's so much to be seen in these uh, countries that we don't often go to. But I think that you can promote the other side of the country, promote the awesome people, promote the beautiful sites without pretending like it's not dangerous. I think it's really important to be transparent, especially when you go to countries where the human rights violations are super, super high, that you are honest and transparent and clear about the way things are. Even if your experience was fantastic, that doesn't take away that other people need to be aware of the laws, of the dangers when they go to these countries. Because I've seen the vlogs from Saudi Arabia and I've seen vlogs from somewhere like Iran. Actually, I was watching today a vlog in Iran and the girl in the vlog was saying things like, what you've heard about Iran is completely wrong. All the news is so fake, it's so wrong. And this country is completely safe, it's not dangerous at all. I agree with her to some extent because it's true that the, you know our public consciousness of these places is not entirely true. But at the same time, your experience is your experience. And because you are having a great time, that's fantastic and you've seen a lot of great things, that's fantastic. That doesn't mean it's completely 100% safe. In that same vlog in Iran, the people had a drone with them and they almost flew it but didn't. And there's actually a vlog called The Way Overland. They flew a drone in Iran in July and just got out of jail now. There's also another Australian visitor who went to Iran and is being held on who knows what charge. Literally, no one knows what charge they're being held on, but they're in solitary confinement for 10 years. And it's really hard to get these people out of the situation because of the different laws there. The littlest things can get you detained indefinitely for years with no right to a lawyer. But these vloggers who are so close to doing something illegal and winding up in jail for an indefinite amount of time, maybe access to a lawyer, maybe not, they're saying there's no safety concerns. That vlogger in Iran saying that everything we've heard is a lie about that country. And then on, on the comments on Instagram of these influencers who are in Saudi Arabia, some of the comments are saying things like, wow, like the media is so evil. Everything we've heard is, is so not true. Like you can't believe anything about this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the media can and does lie sometimes, just flat out. Or they over-exaggerate things or under-exaggerate things to fit the narrative they want to fit. But it's dangerous to say that everything you've heard is a lie. All the news you've heard is a lie. Because it's not. Jamal Khashoggi really was murdered. I'm saying his name wrong. I know I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna butcher his name, but Raif Badawi, he is a liberal writer who was writing about women's rights and issues in Saudi Arabia. He's jailed for 10 years because he was writing of things that were against the government, even though it was peacefully done. This stuff is real. This stuff really happened. And like the women who are still in jail being tortured, the women who started and helped move along the revolution to get women to be able to drive in Saudi Arabia, women can drive. They're enjoying the rights that these women are in jail for and being tortured for. That is real. And it's dangerous to say that everything you've heard is fake because it's not. Some of it, yes but not all of it. You have to be clear and upfront about these things, but because people could be under the impression that it's fine, it's liberal, it's relaxed. They go out, they hold hands with their gay partner in public, 
or whatever because they think it's okay because they've been conditioned to think, oh, it's cool now. It's okay. My favorite vloggers, you know, they show me a great time and they could be in jail indefinitely. They could be killed. It's dangerous to pretend that everything is perfect when it's not. And the other thing is these people going to these countries are a lot of times married, white, straight couples. Do you think a gay couple would have the same safety as you do in these countries where in Saudi Arabia you can be put to death for being gay or even being near people who are gay? I remember a few years ago, Gigi Gorgeous, a transgender woman on YouTube, a very famous YouTuber, she was not allowed to go into Dubai because she's transgender. I'm just talking more about these people who are on these lavish, all expense paid vacations in Saudi Arabia saying that everything was completely safe. Of course everything was completely safe. You're on a guide sanctioned by the government. Those people, by the way, the influencers who are on the trip to Saudi Arabia, they were not allowed to deviate from their itinerary. So you're on this planned guide going to the fanciest hotels, the nicest restaurants, the coolest things to do. Of course everything seems safe. It's all planned out specifically from the government for you to do and enjoy. Do you think a normal person like me could afford to go on a trip like that? No. I don't think a lot of these people are thinking outside of their own excuse privileged experience because not everyone is going to have that. Your experience is so different from the average traveler and of course it's worlds different than an average citizen. And I think these influencers who are paid to go to Saudi Arabia, they are pretending everything's perfect because in almost all of their Instagram posts, if you scroll down, there's only good things because they are deleting any comments that disagree with them, any comments that criticize them. I think the only person, the only influencer I saw who didn't delete all of their criticism and negative comments was Devin Supertramp. But although people are saying he's still deleting a lot of them, I don't know. Jessica Mabongo, a travel influencer who was paid to promote Saudi, said that much of the criticism around visiting specific countries comes from trolls and people who weren't followers to begin with. I really think it's dangerous to consider people who disagree with you as trolls. I really vehemently disagree with deleting criticism from your comments and not letting there be a conversation. If people are literally trolling you and they're just like, go kill yourself, you look like shit, whatever, delete those comments, they're not helpful anyway. But for people who are trying to voice their opinion and get to you and talk to you and talk to other people, I think it's really wrong to delete those comments. But all of this leads to bigger questions because you know my opinion, which is that I think it's fine to go somewhere as long as you are open, honest, and mindful about how you're sharing it. Because I've seen, for example, vlogs in North Korea where they're definitely not promoting the country, they're just showing it as a kind of journalistic take almost. But obviously there's a big difference between a journalistic take and promotion where these, these people in Saudi Arabia were just being paid to promote the country after seeing only a very small, curated, privileged version of that country. But do you think that these influencers who are going to Saudi Arabia being paid to promote it and just singing their praises and not allowing any comments criticizing them and not acknowledging the human rights violations that are going on, all the horrible things that happen all the time, the inequality between people like them visiting the country and a normal person and the rights of an average woman, things like that. Is it wrong for them to do that or do you think that it's actually a good thing because we should see the other side of it and everyone already knows the bad side, so why can't we just focus on the good side? Do you think that? I disagree with you because I don't think everyone actually knows the bad side. Like I said, I think they just have a vague idea. I think it's interesting to think about, but if we move beyond this one case of these people who are paid to travel to Saudi Arabia and promote it, and let's talk about like general vlogs. If you are just a regular vlogger who wants to go to Saudi Arabia, does that mean that you are thereby promoting the country? I don't know if just visiting somewhere automatically means that you are promoting it. I don't think I believe that, but it is a promotion if you only share the good, I feel like. Where is the line where it's like, okay, things here are so bad, I really shouldn't be promoting in any way, shape, or form. Where is that line for you? Is it North Korea?
There's actually other countries where I had literal plans to go to. We just can't anymore because we can't separate the politics from the travel morally and also because the politics of the place would affect us in really significant ways. I mean, there are places that we were going to visit where, you know, there's no free speech. If you say the wrong thing, if you speak out in any way, shape or form, no matter how peacefully, no matter how softly against the government, you're going to get a knock on your door. You can be detained forever for no reason, with no right to a lawyer, no due justice. Right now in the world, there are minorities in concentration camps and in those same countries, it's very beautiful and there's lots of history and great people and great food. So it's like, at what point can you stop separating tourism from the politics? Like, where do you feel wrong for promoting a place where all this stuff is happening? You know, people are in concentration camps. People are being put in jail for speaking their minds. Meanwhile, you're like sipping a margarita in a five-star hotel, sharing pictures of like flowers and a mountain outside your window, pretending it's a perfect place, promoting the country that is doing so many horrible things to its own citizens and foreigners. At the same time, I do understand that not everything is black and white and, you know, <laughs> intentions do matter, you know? People are not trying to condone these horrible things. They're just trying to show the good aspects of the country that may not often be seen. And I appreciate that. And that's true. And that's why I don't know. There's no complete answer. Like there's a lot of aspects to this. Another side to it is that some people might feel like, well, I can't travel and see the world and see all these beautiful places because the government sucks. And you might see not going to places like this or not vlogging them as kind of gatekeeping travel. And I do get that stance as well. But again, I guess it all just comes down to if you're a travel vlogger, you just have to be honest. That's that's the way I see it. And I think that there's a certain level of awareness that you should have as a vlogger. You don't have to know the entire history of a country, but I think you should be generally aware of things that are going on and things that could affect other tourists, especially if you are in a place of privilege where you're in five-star hotels, where you're being catered to by the government. You should be thinking about okay, well, when I promote this, I need to think about the average person's experience. Will they be traveling like me? Will they not be? What are things that they should know? Because if you are promoting a country, especially if you have all these followers, you have millions of followers, you're called influencer for a reason. You are influencing people's decisions to visit based on what you say and what you do. And while saying this, I also see another point where it's like, well, hey, it's not my responsibility or my problem if someone else isn't going to do their due diligence and do research before traveling somewhere. And there is a point there because you should know not to believe 100% what any random person on the internet says and you should look into it yourself. But people don't always work like that. And if you have such a huge influence, I think it's something to keep in mind what you say really does affect what people do and what they think. On a personal note, I have always told Harrison that I will never travel somewhere where I am looked at and treated like a second class citizen because I am a woman or somewhere where my gay friends would be treated like a second class citizen or not a person at all because they are gay. I've always said I would never travel to places like that. But to be honest, I don't know if that's true anymore because I guess I'm just gatekeeping myself from seeing the world because of other people's prejudices. But if and when I travel to places where I am treated differently because I'm a woman, where I'm treated with disrespect or I feel that others would be treated with disrespect, I'm not going to hide it. I think it has to be talked about and not sugarcoated. If you put travel, an Instagram picture, a pretty vlog over the reality of what's happening. I don't know who that's helping. Actually, in interviews with travel influencers, a bunch of them say they don't really know what's going on and they don't know a lot, so they shouldn't speak on it. And I also get that aspect. But if you don't know a lot and you can't speak on it, then what makes you confident to say that everything is completely safe? The truth is, there is good in Saudi Arabia. There are good people. There are cool things to do. There's beauty, there's history. There is good. There's a lot of good. But that doesn't mean that there's no bad. And that goes for any country. And I just think us as travel vloggers should be 
aware of where we are. I'm sorry this video is so rambly. It's just my thoughts about everything that's going on and I've just felt kind of passionate to talk about this lately because of all the world news and this article with this, the people being paid to promote Saudi and the comments and the Instagram and the comments that are being deleted. I think there is not a space to discuss this right now and I want to create that space. I want to talk about politics, travel, travel vlogging specifically, should they be combined? Should travel vloggers be more aware of what they're promoting? Should they be more honest or does it even matter? Should politics not matter at all in a travel vlog? You just want to see the hotel in the mountains. I don't know. Nothing is wrong. I would really, 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 really love to hear your opinion and your voice. Seriously, I would love to have a conversation about this. My thoughts can be changed and molded. I really legit want to just talk about this. A lot of travel vlogs focus on only the good things, only the lofty things, and I think travel is not always light. Travel can be burdensome with heavy things and, and moral issues and things you have to think about and really delve deep into what the meaning of it is. I don't know, I'm just getting too into it, but thank you for allowing me to speak about what I'm thinking about, and I really hope that this will create some meaningful discussion. <sighs> yeah, please don't hate me. I'm really nervous about this video. Again, I really mean no disrespect to any people from any country at all. Thank you for hearing me out. Please leave some comments. I respect your opinion. And um, yeah, that's it for this one.